standing still this time, and I'm sniping him. I'm happy with this arrangement. Oh, here he comes. Uh, see if we can... Perhaps... Okay. Knock him. Neural shock him down. Okay. Push. Okay. Wait, there's a shock trip left. <laughs> we actually... Yeah, we took him down. <laughs> I thought he'd be the last guy, but no, a bit of an anti-climax here. So let's uh, finish this in classic fashion. We get shot through. Not exactly sure why. That's why I just said made any sense, but there you have it. Okay, we got it. to look around while the little thing is collapsing. I, I just keep going. Okay. That part seems most stable of the whole line. And there's the body. Excellent. They are now shown. Kate was the first down, as always. Huh. Still has the sound from the chugging things. Too close, Commander. Ten more seconds we would have been swimming in molten sulfur. The Normandy isn't equipped to land in exploding volcanoes. They tend to fry our sensors and melt our hull. <laughs> Just for future reference. We almost died out there and your pilot is making jokes? Sometimes jokers are real ass. Just try to ignore him. I see. It must be a human thing. I don't have a lot of experience dealing with your species, Commander. But I am grateful to you. You saved my life back there, and not just from the volcano. Those Geth would have killed me or dragged me off to Saren. What did Saren want with you? Do you know something about the Conduit? Only that it was somehow connected to the Prothean extinction. That is my real area of expertise. I have spent the past 50 years trying to figure out what happened to them. Just how old are you exactly? I hate to admit it, but I am only 106. Damn! I hope I look that good when I'm your age. A century may seem like a long time to a short-lived species like yours, but among the Asari, I am barely considered more than a child. That is why my research has not received the attention it deserves. Because of my youth, other Asari scholars tend to dismiss my theories on what happened to the Protheans. Did your research turn up anything interesting? What is interesting is what I did not turn up. There is remarkably little archaeological evidence of the Protheans, and even less that might explain why they disappeared. It is almost as if someone did not want the mystery solved. It is like someone came along after the Protheans were gone and cleansed the galaxy of clues. But here is the incredible part. According to my findings, the Protheans were not the first galactic civilization to mysteriously vanish. This cycle began long before them. Where'd you come up with this theory? I thought there wasn't any evidence. I have been working on this for 50 years. I have tracked down every scrap and shred of evidence. Eventually, subtle patterns start to emerge. Patterns that hint at the truth. It is difficult to explain to someone else. I cannot point to one specific thing to prove my case. It is more a feeling derived from a half century of dedicated research. But I know I'm right. And eventually, I will be able to prove it. There were other civilizations before the Protheans. This cycle has repeated itself many times over. What cycle? What are you talking about? The galaxy is built on a cycle of extinction. Each time a great civilization rises up, it is suddenly and violently cast down. Only ruins survive. The Protheans rose up from a single world until their empire spanned the entire galaxy. Yet even they climbed to the top on the remains of those who came before. 
Their greatest achievements, the mass relays and the citadel, are based on the technology of those who came before them. And then, like all the other forgotten civilizations throughout galactic history, the Protheans disappeared. I have dedicated my life to figuring out why. Shut up and I'll tell you. <laughs> uh, gosh, she doesn't literally say that. They were wiped out by a race of sentient machines. The Reapers. The... the Reapers? But I have never heard of... How do you know this? What evidence do you have? There was a damaged Prothean beacon on Eden Prime. It burned a vision into my brain. I'm still trying to sort out what it all means. Visions? Yes, that makes sense. The beacons were designed to transmit information directly into the mind of the user. Finding one that still works is extremely rare. No wonder the Geth attacked Eden Prime. The chance to acquire a working beacon, even a badly damaged one, is worth almost any risk. But the beacons were only programmed to interact with Prothean physiology. Whatever information you received would have been confused, unclear. I am amazed you were able to make sense of it at all. A lesser mind would have been utterly destroyed by the process. You must be remarkably strong-willed, Commander. This isn't helping us find Saren, or the Conduit. Of course, you're right. I am sorry, my scientific curiosity got the better of me. Unfortunately, I do not have any information that could help you find the Conduit, or Saren. I don't know why Saren wanted you out of the picture, but I think we'll be a lot better off if we bring you along. Thank you, Commander. Saren might come after me again. I cannot think of anywhere safer than here on your ship. And my knowledge of the Protheans might be useful later on. And her biotics will come in handy when the fighting starts. <laughs> yeah, Rex is absolutely right about that. Liara is devastating in combat once she's got a few skill points and upgrades and things. I mean, seriously, just biotic spam all the time. Very fun, especially on Theros, um, as we'll see later on. Good to have you on the team, Liara. Thank you, Commander. I am very grateful. Oh, I am afraid I am feeling a bit lightheaded. When was the last time you ate, or slept? Dr. Chakwa should take a look at you. It is probably just mental exhaustion, coupled with the shock of discovering the Protheans' true fate. I need some time to process all this. Still, it could not hurt to be examined by a medical professional. It will give me the chance to think things over. Are we finished here, Commander? Go see the doctor. The rest of you, dismissed. Mission reports are filed, Commander. You want me to patch you through to the council? <laughs> oh, this is a fun part. Yeah, you get to do this every um, major plot uh, planet you complete. You get to file a mission report to the council, and their reactions do vary. Patch them through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. We've received your report, Commander. I understand Dr. Tassoni is on the Normandy. I assume you're taking the necessary security precautions. Don't tell me how to do my job. You are free to act as you see fit, Commander. Our role is to offer guidance and advice. It's up to you if you're smart enough to listen. I don't need this. <laughs> Communications cut, Commander. Yeah, there's some disconnect. You can, all, you can do that in virtually any point in the conversation with them. And the reason we did that is because, basically, we've just been through, you know, fighting Krogan, load of Geth, uh, just escaped from a lava-filled volcano, we're not in the best of moods and here the council will come and try to tell us how to do our job a bit. I just say that I think the Turian representative rubs her up the wrong way. You know, he's not who you want to see um, first thing after getting back from a hostile planet. Let's put it that way. And he will continue to act in this manner for the uh, entirety of the game. Uh, I prefer gold to silver, you know, for my metal. I figured you'd recommend me for one since I, uh, pulled your boots out of the fire. Saving my boots from burning lava is part of your job, Joker. We don't give medals to soldiers for doing their jobs. Add figures. Just get me a nice card and a cake. No coconut, though. I hate that crap. <laughs> so, Commander, why don't you tell me why you're really here? I have to go. <laughs> Alright, see ya. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's Joker's ego at work again. He deserves something for getting us out. Yeah, carbon and cake is more like it, rather than a full-on, you know, medal ceremony and so on. Well, uh, quite a long set, considering we just did the shortest plot planet. 
plan to talk to people, but we'll do that next time. And uh, let me just check my level. We are level 18, two away. So, yeah, next time, uh, talking to people, and also uh, a blast from the past, you might say. Okay, we're not going away quite yet, actually. I uh, haven't got much footage in relation to previous sets. So, let's take this opportunity to talk to everyone. Seeing as uh, it will now be updated because we completed a mission, they'll be willing to talk more. Commander? Do you have a minute? I don't. What's on your mind, Lieutenant? Off the record, I think there's something wrong here. This Saren is looking for records on some kind of galactic extinction. But we can't get backup from the Council? Sorry, Commander. There's writing on the wall here, but someone isn't reading it. We've got our orders. Belly aching won't change them. I hear you. It, it just seems like a group that's been around as long as the Council should see this coming. I mean, it's funny, we finally get out here and the final frontier was already settled. And the residents don't even seem impressed by the view. Or the dangers. Well, well. You're a romantic. Did you sign on for the dream, Malenko? Secure a man's future in space? <laughs> yeah, I, re I read a lot of those books when I was a kid, where the hero goes to space to prove himself worthy of a woman he loves, or, you know, for justice. Or maybe I was a romantic in the beginning, but I thought about it after brain camp. Uh, sorry. Biotic acclimation and temperance training. I'm not looking for the dream. I just want to do some good. See what's out here. Sorry if I got too informal. Protocol wasn't a big focus back in BOT. Tell me about it. Biotic acclimation and temperance didn't last past the airlock. To the kids they hauled in, it was brain camp. Sorry, hauled in is unkind. We were encouraged to commit to an evaluation of our abilities so an understanding of biotics could be compiled. There are worse results of accidental exposure to element zero in the womb. Beats the brain tumors some kids grew up with. I heard all about that. How companies would arrange accidents to expose people to element zero. There was never any proof of that. It's not what happened in my case, anyway. My mother was downwind of a transport crash. It was before there were human biotics. A little after the discovery of the Martian ruins. It only gets iffy around 63 when Kinetics was running out of first-gen subjects. Until then, they'd relied on accidentals. A bunch of guys in suits show up at your door after school, and next thing you know, you're out on Jump Zero. You know of any intentional exposures for certain? No one knows. Doesn't mean they didn't happen. As big as the exposures were, it was hard to track down accidentals. It was different then. No one knew the potential, so there wasn't a lot of regulation. Anything Kinetics did was gold. I'm not saying they intentionally detonated drives over our outposts, but... In retrospect, they were damn quick on the scene. Hmm. Yeah, he has a point there. Jump Zero is Gagarin Station, right? What's it like? Yeah, that's the official name. Biggest and farthest facility we had for decades. Right on the termination shock, the outer edge of the solar system. It's where they did all the goose chase FTL research before we caught on to using mass effect fields. It was a sterile research platform when I was there. Hmm. Goose chasing FDL research, eh? Well, I wouldn't discount it. I mean, it's pretty lucky we're able to use mass relays and everything, but still, I can still, yeah, I can see why FDL drives and so on would definitely be useful being able to move without relays. It would definitely make you much more effective at warfare. There were other kids in the same boat, right? At least you weren't alone out there. That's true. We did have a little circle that'd get together every night before lights out. We didn't have much to do, though. It was a research platform then, and Kinetics kept Jump Zero off the extranet to prevent leaks. <laughs> time to get physical, then. Uh, uh, time to talk, then. And you must have had plenty of time to get to know each other. Yeah. We'd sit around and bull every night after dinner, play cards or network games. There was this girl named Rana who had a little circle grow up around her. She was from Turkey. Her family was very rich. But she was smart, and charming as hell. 
beautiful, but not stuck up about it. Like you, I guess. Ma'am. Um, if you think they're beautiful, well, thank you. But, uh, yeah, especially in this light. Sounds like she was special to you. She was. Maybe she felt the same. But things never felt together. Training, you know. Jump Zero's a long way from home. What was it like? The grand gateway to humanity looks a lot better in the vids. Anyway, this was supposed to be a casual debrief, not a bull session about stuff that happened years ago. We have to depend on each other in combat. I like knowing what kind of man I have at my back. I understand, ma'am. I won't let you down. You, uh, make a habit of getting this personal with everyone? Of course. But I don't enjoy it with everyone. We'll talk again later. I'll, uh... I'll need some time to process that, Commander. But, yeah. I'd like that. Uh, yeah. Caden's getting some ideas there, if you hadn't noticed. Uh, let's actually uh, talk to Chakwas. Actually, no, we've been over exactly why she's here, who she is and everything. She doesn't gain any new options until right near the very end of the game, I don't think. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I never properly thanked you for saving me from the Geth, Commander. If you hadn't shown up, I... I'm just glad we got there in time. So am I. I know you took a chance bringing me aboard this ship. I have seen the way your crew looks at me. They do not trust me. But I am not like Benezia. I will do whatever I can to help you stop Saren. I promise. Don't worry, Liara. I trust you. I know you won't let me down. It means a lot to hear you say that, Commander. Thank you. Yeah, we go with a kind of instinctive judgment of people. Uh, it can be good, can be bad, but it will be to one side or another. Do you know why Benezia joined up with Saren? I don't understand it. She was always outspoken about the need for the Asari to become more involved in shaping galactic events. Maybe she thought allying herself with Saren would somehow be for the greater good in the long run. At least I hope so. Maybe she's just evil. <laughs> Actually, we'll go for that, because we do believe in the idea of uh, some things just being inherently evil. Any chance she's in this for power or personal gain? No, not the Benezia I knew. But I hadn't spoken with my mother in many years. She may have changed. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. Sure. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved. But it is not an essential element of the Union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits on to our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. 